Want more life and energy in your drum mix, or are your drums getting lost in the chorus behind a wall of guitars? This is what parallel compression can do for you. In this video, you'll see two great but different approaches to using parallel compression and some quick ways that you can take this even further and avoid some of the mistakes. And if you like how this mix sounds and want your next song to sound like this, then head over to terrybeckleyrecording.com and drop me a message about your music. I will then get back to you. The link is in the description. I promise two different ways to use parallel compression, so let's get into it and start with the usual way in which parallel compression is used. Just quickly, Let's go over what parallel compression is. If you already know this stuff, then please skip to the next chapter where we can start digging in. So in basic and simple terms, parallel compression is a method by which we can overprocess the material and still preserve the integrity of the source material, i.e. preserve the dynamics, the clarity, etc. So how do we achieve this? Well, we send a copy of the source material, drums in this case, to an extra or auxiliary channel. We can then smash this channel with compression in any way we want and then blend in the affected channel with the original, thereby preserving the original but also adding in the extra life created in the parallel track. That was a lot of me talking, so let's get on with the demonstration. Okay, so we send a copy of the drum bus out to an auxiliary track, which in logic is done like this. Selecting a send, going down to bus, and then picking an empty bus from the list. You can see here I've already created Paradrums 1 and Paradrums 2, which we'll be using for the demonstration in this video. And of course, every door can do this, but in, in a similar way. So this first bus here, which I've named Paradrums 1, is the first method that I'll be going over on how to parallel compress drums. Doing it this way will bring out all the cool low level detail of the drums, which can sometimes be too subtle to be heard through a dense mix. So let's go over to Paradrums 1 and see what compression I've... So I've set the release to as slow as possible, the 1, I've set the attack as fast as possible to the 7, I'm just smashing the whole signal. So let's listen to the drums in solo and see what this is doing. So this is just the drum bus by itself and then I'll add in the parallel compression. Okay, so obviously it sounds louder. You're adding to the signal, so it's gonna sound louder, but hopefully you heard the extra energy that was coming out of the drums there. By not having a slow attack and emphasizing any transients, you're just bringing out the low level, but cool energy that the drums would have. So let's hear the parallel compression track by itself. That's what squashed drums sound like. So the idea is now, when you've got that, is to turn it off, have the original drums playing, and then fade in the parallel compressed drums to a point that you can hear its effect, but it's not taken over. Then just for good practice, back it off a tad, like so. So, like I said at the beginning of the video, life and energy. So I would say this is the most common way to use parallel compression, and the idea is to smash the drums with extreme compression and not to worry about preserving any transient or dynamics. They will come from the original drums. As the whole idea of parallel compression is to get this extra energy without compromising anything. Now let's have a look at an alternative way to use parallel compression, and then we will get into ways to avoid common mistakes and how to take this even further. So method two is a way to create extra punch and excitement by compressing in a way that massively brings out the transients of the drums, sort of the opposite of what we did last time. So what does this sound like? So I've sent this to bus 12, which I've named Paradrums 2, and let's have a listen to that by itself.
Now that's pumping because you've got the transients coming through. It's really emphasizing the attack of the drums, which is going to add even more excitement transient wise to the original drums. Now this is achieved by changing your attack and release settings when you compress in order to emphasize the transients. So as you can see here, I've got the, the opposite of what we had before. The attack is at its slowest position at one and the release is at its fastest position at seven. So let's blend this into the original like we did before and see what that sounds like. We turn off the parallel compression, we turn on the drum bus just by itself, and then we fade in the parallel compressed drums until we hear it take effect and then just back it off slightly. And the eagle-eyed viewers will have noticed I also have a clipper on here. Because you've got so much transient information now, you've got the option of clipping that and creating even more excitement. And then what I've done with the DF clip from Drumforge is I've just brought down the cymbal. I don't want to clip the cymbals because this kind of compression can make the cymbals go a bit crazy and uh, ruin your drum balance. As you can see, I've got this set here to not clip anything above seven and a half kilohertz. But what has this done for us in the mix? Well, let's have a listen. <laughs> See, those drums are much more snappy. And rather than the low level, cool, vibey detail coming out, you've got the snappy transients and um, energy coming out. Let's have a listen to those two in comparison and see which method of parallel compression you actually prefer. So this is method one. Method two. Now, let's look at the common pitfalls and how to avoid them. So pitfall one, cymbals can get out of hand and parallel compression can affect the balance of your drums. So how do you avoid this? It's in how you set up the routing of your project in your DAW. So if you remember, we sent a copy of the entire drum bus out to the parallel track. So a pro tip to avoid cymbals ruining your mix when using this technique is to do one of two things. You can A, send each drum separately to the parallel track and create a, a mini like sub mix, or you can route everything to a shells bus. So don't send the cymbals, route the tom bus, the kick bus and the snare bus to a shells bus, and then send that out to the parallel compression track. And if you look here, that's how I normally set up the routing within my sessions. I've got a shells bus here and that has the toms and the snare and the kick bus all going to it. So if I didn't want the cymbals to start getting compressed heavily when using this technique, I would just send it out from here instead. Okay, pitfall two. This one is the most important for me and that is phase aligning your parallel channel with the original. Sometimes heavy compression or processing of any kind can affect the phase, which when blended back in with the original can poke holes you know, via phase cancellation with your, with your whole sound. I won't go into phase in any, in any depth in this video, but there are a couple of ways that you can account for this and mitigate this potential problem. I'm not saying you're always gonna have it, and sometimes you might not notice when you're listening to it that it's happened. So it's best just to check, and I can show you two ways of doing this. One is with a plugin from Waves called In Phase, and the other is the sample delay that you'll find in your door. So it's probably not happened. I didn't hear it happen with this, but, but just to check is you load up the plugin, so, in phase by waves set the side chain to be the original source so in this case it's the drum bus set it to capture and play it some audio 
So as you can see, we're, we're pretty in phase here. The correlation is saying we have a plus 61, is that? If it was out of phase, so if we flipped one of these, you'd see it jump into the negative. Uh, and what you would do is here you can shift the samples to try and get the best phase correlation possible. And look, as we shift through it here, you can see that we, with no delay, it was already on its highest. The other way you can do it is by using the sample delay in Logic and then just listen to where you think it sounds it biggest and fullest. So you'd play it and then you'd play with the sample delay here, obviously not that much, just a tad, and listen and use your ears to, to find the most full sound. And lastly, Pitfall 3, and this is sort of an obvious one, buildup of frequencies can occur when blending in with the original signal. So grab an EQ in the parallel channel and just pull out frequencies that bother you once you have blended the, the two signals together, obviously mitigating that problem. And okay, that's it. Hopefully this has given you a new tool for your mixing weaponry or has given you at least new ways to think about parallel compression and taking it a few steps further to make it work for you because the benefits can be game changing. Remember, if you want your next song to sound like the song in this video, head over to terrybeckleyrecording.com and message me there. I'll get back to you. Thank you for watching and see you at the next one.